NLC rejects planned cyber security levy. President Tinubu returns after two weeks abroad. EFCC grills 20 NSCDC contractors, 10 officers. And on the foreign scene, Kenya continues forceful demolition of Nairobi informal settlements near rivers. Hello, welcome to Trust News Update. My name is Lilian Ogazi. And now to the news. The Nigerian Labour Congress NLC has described the planned cyber security levy introduced by the Central Bank of Nigeria on all electronic transactions as another burden on Nigerians. According to a circular issued to various financial institutions, including commercial, merchant, non interest and payment service banks, the Apex Bank indicated that they would the levy would come into effect in two weeks from May sixth. The levy's introduction has sparked widespread criticism among Nigerians and civil society organizations rejecting the policy. The NLC president, Joe Ajero, said such deductions directly affect the disposable income of workers and further diminish the purchasing power of the common citizen. He said the directive is another gang up by the ruling elite to continue its extortion and exploitation of helpless workers and the masses. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives on Wednesday passed a resolution calling on the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, to restore the Northeast region to the national grid. This followed the adoption of a motion of urgent national importance by Honorable Ahmad Usman Jaha from Bornu State. Jaha, in his motion, noted that the Northeast region has been experiencing power challenges due to the activities of insurgents, which had led to destruction of power infrastructures in the region. He said the current state of transmission conductors in the Northeast region is insufficient, urging the TCN to upgrade transmission conductors in the region. The House, while adopting the motion, urged the federal government to allocate adequate resources to the TCN to enable it upgrade transmission conductors and improve power supply in the region. Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, has arrived in Abuja after spending two weeks abroad. Tinubu arrived at his official residence at the Asu Rock Villa in Abuja in the early hours of Wednesday. In a tweet on Tuesday evening, Tinubu's special advisor on information and strategy, Bayo Onanuga, revealed President Bola Tinubu, along with his aides, will return to Nigeria tomorrow from Europe. Two weeks ago, the president departed for the Abuja for the Netherlands for a three-day official visit honoring an invitation from the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root. He joined over 1,000 leaders from businesses, governments and academia from more than 90 countries to review actions taken since the inaugural growth summit held in Geneva, Switzerland in 2023. It was his second visit to the Gulf state in five months. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is set to arraign a former registrar of Zamfara State, Upper Sharia Court 1, Kusau, Abubakar Garbo Dandare, before Justice Bela Shinkafi of Zamfara State High Court sitting in Kusau. Dandare has been arraigned on a two counts charges bordering on diversion of 3.8 million naira belonging to a late businessman, Alaji Ladan Mada, and forgery of the signature of his next of kin, Amidu Mada, on the court cash deposit register. According to the EFCC, the suspect committed the offence of criminal breach of trust. Contrary to Section 311 of the Penal Code, Cap 89 Laws of the Northern Nigeria 1963, and punishable under Section 312 of the same law. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is currently investigating 10 senior officers of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, for their alleged involvement in a 7.5 billion naira fraud. Additionally, 10 contractors linked to the fraud have been summoned by the anti-graft agency EFCC chairman, Ola Olukayode, issued a letter dated April 26, 2024, inviting the indicted NSCDC officers for questioning with sessions scheduled for May 2, 2024 onwards.
The investigation revealed that 7.5 billion naira fraud involved multiple contractors and funds were traced to borrow the change operators allegedly laundered by the senior officers. It was disclosed that payments were made to 20 contractors with 2 billion naira allocated to three major contractors. The EFCC has interrogated all contractors except one female contractor who received over 1 billion naira primarily converted to US dollars. Useful statements from the contractors led to the recovery of approximately 1 billion naira. Some contractors planned to protest at the National Security Advisors Office seeking intervention as they claimed their jobs were executed by NSCDC officers without their knowledge. Despite invitations, one indicted contractor who received 1 billion naira has yet to respond. Investigations also revealed alleged underpayment of NSCDC staff during recent elections compared to counterparts in other agencies. Previous reports state that senior officers being interrogated at the EFCC headquarters in Abuja. Meanwhile, vigilante group in Taraba State has killed an assistant superintendent of police. The police officer was shot in an ambush in Sindire village of Gasol local government can area council of the state. In a statement made available on Wednesday morning in Jalingo, the state capital, police commissioner David Iloyanomo said the ambush was led by the leader of the vigilante group, whom he identified as Ali Disol. According to him, a team of special strike force operatives attached to the government house Taraba State led by SP Jamil Emmanuel while on routine patrol at the Sandidre village in Gasol local government area were ambushed by a group of local vigilante. He said the vigilante group shot the officer on his lap, a situation that led to his demise in a hospital situated in the village. Similarly, a vigilante group in River State known as OSPAC have reportedly killed two siblings, Collins Ugoji and his brother Newman Ugoji, in Idu community of Egbeman Doni area of the River State. The cousins of the deceased Wade Ugoji made his, cous his cousins Collins Ugoji and his brother Newman, who he said came back from Benin, went to Idu to visit one of their relations and were arrested by the vigilante group. He said that the vigilante group branded his cousins as kidnappers, took them into custody and consequently shot them to death. He said the motorbike that belonged to the victims as well as their personal belongings were taken away by the group. River State Police Command Public Relations Officer SP Grace Iringe Koko said the DPO of Omoku Police Division with his patrol team had visited Idu community after the information got to them. The National Agency for Food and Drug Control, NAFDAC, has closed three unregistered bakeries and a sachet water factory in Patakot, River State. These facilities operated in makeshift structures with poor hygiene standards pose serious health risks to consumers. The operation led by the state coordinator for River State, Emmanuel Onogu, was prompted by tips off from concerned citizens and thorough investigations. The unregistered bakeries were found to be operating in unsanitary conditions, including the use of a generator inside the production room. NAVDAC in a statement released said the closure of this establishment underscores its unwavering commitment to upholding public health standards and cracking down on unscrupulous producers. Uh, want to be investigated? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now moving over to some health related issues, AstraZeneca has initiated a global withdrawal of its COVID-19 vaccine attributing the decision to an abundance of newer vaccines tailored to combat evolving virus variants. This move follows the company's voluntary withdrawal of its European Union marketing authorization in March. 
The European Medicines Agency subsequently revoked the vaccine authorization for use on May 7th. AstraZeneca stated that the withdrawal stems from reduced demand as newer vaccines have become available and adapted to target COVID-19 variants. The company acknowledged its vaccine's significant contribution to saving lives with over 3 billion doses supplied globally. Originally named Vaxzevia in 2021, the vaccine was administered as two injections and utilized a modified adenovirus to produce a protein from SARS-CoV-2. Despite its overall safety and efficacy, it carried a rare but serious side effect, thrombosis. Professor Catherine Bennett of Dinky University emphasized the vaccine's crucial role in the early stages of the pandemic but noted its limitations against emerging variants. The World Health Organization's April guidance recommended vaccine targeting the Gen 1 lineage displacing existing XBB lineage variants. This is news updates coming to you from Trust TV. Coming up, residents react as government demolishes Sanchez in Makadi. More news when we return this day. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is News Updates on Trust TV. Let's take a look at our headlines again. NLC rejects planned cybersecurity levy. President Tinibu returns after two weeks abroad. Now moving on. Has fuel queues subsided across filling stations? The federal government says it would sanction marketers hoarding and diverting premium motor spirits. The Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority said on Tuesday that its men are moving around the country to ensure the fuel loaded at the depot are not hoarded or diverted by any individual for any reason. In the past two weeks, Nigerians experienced fuel scarcity that forced the prices of petrol to skyrocket from an average 650 naira to above 1,000 naira per litre in many filling stations across the country. The NMPRA Southwest Region Coordinator Ayo Cordoso said any filling station caught hoarding the product would be made to sell to the public at the popular market price. Reactions have trailed the demolition of structures in Makodi, the Benue State capital, by the Urban Development Board. Those who speak to Trust Television said that the displacement of some members of the business community in the state is a call for concern. Jimmy Azande reports. Some of the residents are saying that though the action may result in development of the state capital, but the timing is wrong given the current economic difficulties in the country. Uh, someone said that a good thing done at the wrong time is not useful. So I feel the pains for those people because the timing is very, very wrong. Why do I say this? This is a very difficult time that Nigerians are passing through very, very terrible times. You and I know the cost of living now, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the cost of fuel, uh, the rise in cost in the dollar, and all that. A section of Makuri residents are accusing the government agency of deliberately crippling the micro-businesses. They demand for compensation for those affected. I think they need a little compensation because laxity creep into their activity. The reason being that if they had stopped that erection in the first place, that wouldn't have happened. So there wouldn't have been any need for them to come out for that destruction in the first place. So for them to have allowed the structures to be erected in the first place and then come off to, to, to destroy, that is where I fought them that they should have that sense of human angle to give a little compensation to those that are victims today. The Urban Development Board says it has served notices to the structure owners before the demolitions. We gave an, a radio announcement for about two weeks. This uh, journalist can attest to it. And we serve them notices and you can see how they are marked. So this has been going on for a long while now. This thing started since the end of last year. So today that we have the... Uh, the resources and everything to do it. Coming to put these people in such a condition at this time is, is, is inhuman, if you ask me. And then the second aspect is that this is rainy season. 
If it were during dry season period, it would have been a little bit better because they can just shift their wares to maybe under a mango tree or whatever shade. This is the first time such demolition exercises carried out by the agency in Makodi that has resulted in many people being pushed out of businesses. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. The Central Bank of Nigeria has directed banks to stop charges and cash deposits until September 30th this year. CBN discloses in a circular dated May 6, 2024 and signed by its Director of Banking Supervision, Adetona Adediji. Some bank customers had raised concerns after lenders began the collection of processing fees for cash deposits on May 1st. Banks are meant to charge 2% on deposits above 500000 for individuals, while corporate account holders are to be charged 2% on deposits above 3 million naira. And now to the foreign scene, Kenya's government has continued the forceful eviction of people living in most of the informal settlements in Nairobi that are next to rivers. President William Ruto last week ordered the evacuation of all homes along the nation's waterways. The announcement came a day after a torrent of water swept away scores of people in an area some 50 kilometers east of the capital. Tensions were high in Nairobi settlement on Tuesday, with residents saying they were caught unawares despite the 48 hours directive to move, lapsing five days ago. As excavators and bulldozers pulled down structures, some residents watched helplessly as others tried to grab iron sheets and timber and anything of value they could get their hands on. The death toll in weeks of flooding and landslide caused by the torrential rain has risen to over 200. Ruto, we voted for you because you said you'd safeguard the poor. Now are you helping the poor or finishing them off? If you plan to finish poor people, then just bomb us all and get it done with. You're finishing us, Ruto, and you claim to be a man of God. Now what are we going to do? We love our president and that is why we supported him. He should come to our aid because here we had no problem moving. We ask for urgent help to resettle people here who have nowhere to stay and nothing. Director of the Copernicus Climate Change Service, Carlo Buonatempo, April 2024, marked another milestone in global warming trends. Buonatempo noted this means that the sequence, the streak of months, record-breaking months that started last year in June is continuing, and now in the 11th month, while Europe experienced the second warmest April, other regions saw even greater temperature increases. North America, Eastern Asia, parts of the Middle East, parts of South America, and most of Africa were particularly affected. There is yet another uh, record-breaking month, um, and, uh, and this means that the sequence, uh, the streak of months, of record-breaking months that started last year in, in June um, is continuing, and now we are at 11 months. Um, so that's one thing, and that's true for for the global mean average, but it's also true for uh, sea surface temperature. You see uh, again and again El Nino and La Nina alternating with one another. We'll see cooler and, and, and wetter and drier years, but the tendency is what matters, and the tendency is towards a warmer climate. And now in sports, Ademola Lukman has reflected on his impressive performance for Nigeria at the 2023 African Cup of Nations. Lukman was one of Nigeria's top performers at the competition, finishing as joint top scorer with William Trust Ekong. The 26-year-old was the hero in Nigeria's round of 16 victory against eternal rivals Cameroon, with his brace sending the Super Eagles to the quarterfinals. Lukman also explained how it felt to be Nigeria's joint top scorer in his first ever Afghan tournament. Still in sports, Super Falcons forward Chiwendu Iwezu has penned a contract extension with Mexican club Pocha Femil. He has assigned a deal until 2027 with an option for another year. The former Delta Queens player has registered 13 goals and 4 assists in 17 appearances for Pachuca. 
this season, the striker who has been one of the standout performers for Pachuca this season can play in multiple roles up front. She also played a crucial role in Nigeria's qualification for the 2024 Olympic Games. Pachuca is currently second with 42 points in the Clostra 2024 La Liga Mixed Female. Well, with that, we've come to the end of News Update here on Trust TV. Do well to follow us for more news programs and documentaries across all our social media platforms. Thanks for watching. My name is Liliano Gazi. Bye for now.